Welcome to This Week in BJJ, the world's first and only live jiu-jitsu show. Brought to you by Zebra Mats, Simply Z Best, and Q5 Labs, Stay Alpha. Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of This Week in BJJ. This is Budo Jake, and today is August 30th, 2013. Today we're going to talk about the BJJ Expo, the Masters and Seniors Worlds. We're going to see an amazing match between Hanan Borges and Sinistro. And we're gonna have a very special guest of Roger Machado. So don't go anywhere. Let's talk about the news. One thing that lower belts sometimes worry about is what to do if the unexpected happens. What happens, what should you do if you submit a black belt? I know whenever that happened to me, which was, which was very rare, uh, I would get worried because usually the smashing would occur right after that. But what should you do? Say you get lucky and you submit your instructor or another black belt in class. Should you be scared? Should you apologize? Well, Kit Dale has, a, has an idea for you. Here we go. Let's take a look at Kit Dale's advice on what to do if you submit a black belt. And on that note, let's take a look at a black belt match from the Boston Open. This occurred on August 24th, last weekend. This was the lightweight finals of the black belt division, Hainan Borges taking on Sinistro. This was the finals, and uh, watch carefully. That was an amazing loop choke by Hainan Borges, and I bet you one thing, I bet Sinistro will never get caught in that ever again. That's one thing about getting caught in, in surprise moves like that, but uh, uh, you know, in the heat of the moment, I'm sure Sinistro was uh, just caught up in it, And uh, but taking his opponents back like he did was about the worst thing he could do when he was stuck in that loop choke, but uh, I'm sure he'll study it and it'll never happen again. He even said on his Instagram account, Sinistro says, I learned a lot and will not do the same mistakes. One of the biggest events coming up uh, this year is the BJJ Expo. Some of you guys might have gone to it last year. This is a two-day event held at the Long Beach Convention Center. This year it's going to be on November 9th and November 10th. Uh, we're going to be doing the live broadcast. Uh, there's going to be some matches taking place on Saturday, some brown belts, 16-man uh, brown belt tournament, all handpicked by Henzo Gracie. And on Sunday is going to be the super fights. And uh, we've got an incredible list of competitors. They haven't all been uh, announced yet, but some of the guys that are going to be competing on Sunday include Kyle Terra, Homolo Bajal, Bouchesha, Rodolfo Vieira, Paulo Miao, and two matches have been announced. One of them is going to be Samuel Braga versus Joao Miao. This is being advertised as the Baron Bolo super fight. Of course, both of those guys' specialty moves are the Baron Bolo, so the big question is, will either one of them be able to pull it off? And the other match that was announced was Jeff Glover versus Bruno Malfasini. And this one should be really good. As you might recall, last year, Jeff Glover beat Kyle Terra at the BJJ Expo. Uh, he, he has never faced Bruno Malfasini. So this will be a really exciting matchup that uh, normally we wouldn't get to see. Uh, 
And that's what I like about the BGG Expo. They're trying to get matches that wouldn't necessarily happen at other events. There's also going to be free seminars with Brawley with Dima, Henneran here on Gracie, and more. Also, an autograph signing with Hickson and Hoist. So if you're local, of course you ought to go. But even if you live out of town, uh, plan for this. November 9th and November 10th, the Long Beach Convention Center will be broadcasting both days uh, if you can't make it. One more event to talk about, and that is the Masters and Seniors Worlds. This is going to be on... Uh, October 5th and 6th at the Long Beach Pyramid. We're going to be doing a live broadcast on both days. Last year, this was a one-day tournament, and it sold out fairly quickly. This year, it will be a two-day event, so we're going to see a lot of the, uh, of the old guys, including yours truly, competing out there. Looking forward to that. Okay, let's talk about a couple new products. I know there's some tr traditionalists out there that don't like to wear patches on your geese, but a lot of you guys do. So now we're offering a service on Budo Videos where you can pin print your own logo um, on your gi. We're gonna We can do this in-house. It takes about a day to do, and uh, it's very reasonable. For as low as $10, there's quantity discounts as well. You can print logos. You can print, print actual pictures. I don't know if you can see the detail in this, but uh, it's incredibly detailed. It looks just like a photograph. All you need to do is send us your artwork, and we'll print it. Of course, you need to have the rights to print it. We can't print uh, just any old logo. It has to be one of your creation. But uh, take a look on budovideos.com for your custom sublimated patches. Next up is, uh, you know, for you guys that compete, we're uh, usually very concerned about picking up something nasty from the mats. And uh, one product that just came out, which is a great way to stay clean, are these on-the-go towels. They are individually packaged, only cost a dollar a piece, and uh, great to just wipe yourself down after a tournament. Let's take a look. So like I'm saying, there's uh, three different towels, different... different uh, Scents. One's called After Hours, one has no scent, and one's called AM, AM Rush. Uh, great way to keep clean and stay safe. Only a dollar each on BudoVideos.com. And lastly, before we go to promotions, I want to let you guys know uh, there's going to be a Labor Day sale on BudoVideos.com for 15% off just about everything. Uh, valid Saturday through Monday. Now let's take a look at some brand new black belts. <laughs> got five guys to congratulate this week. These guys all contacted us uh, via email at twibjj at budovideos.com. If you know anybody else that got uh, recently promoted, feel free to send us a picture of them. First up, we got Devin Keenan. He was promoted by Hainan Borges, who we just saw earlier, and Brian Caldwell. Next up is Bill Duffy. He was promoted by Gene Kleber from Kimura BJJ. Then we got Stanley Chen also promoted by Gene Kleber. Kyle Malta was promoted by Jacare from Alliance, and he actually just opened up his own school, Alliance, in Lancaster, California. And finally, Raul Jimenez got, also got promoted by Jacare. Congratulations, guys. Okay, guys, we'll be right back with Roger Machado, so uh, stay tuned. And I was in uh, Rio. And I was going to work, working out with the different uh, martial arts schools in Rio, and I kept hearing about this uh, jujitsu family. And I thought, geez, I might track them down. So I did, and I went and worked out with them. And I'd done jujitsu for years and all that. And, and I got on the mat with them, and phew, I, was like, I was like a beginner. Really? And so I brought them to the States, and, I, and so I've been training with them for about 10 years. Yeah, but they, they kicked your butt? Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the mat. They, they, t they did a number on me on the mat. <laughs> So nice to see you again. How you doing? Can't wait to train with you. I think I was just getting tired <laughs> in your dreams. <laughs> Carlos is the older of the group. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're gonna train with him? Uh, yeah, I used to train with their uncle, who trained them. Roger Machado, thank you so much for coming on today. You're very welcome. So you are the second oldest of the brothers, is that right? That's right, correct. So does that mean you're the second strongest as well? Well, I wish. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yes, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm right there on the middle of the bunch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's five brothers, Carlos, Roger, Higan, John Jacques, and John. Can you give, for the people that don't know the family too well, can you give us a couple lines about each brother and who they are in the family? That's true. A, a lot of people uh, don't know this other side. Uh, my brother, Carlos, he's, uh, he's a poet. Is he really? Yes, himself. He's, uh, he even wrote a, a book uh, many years ago in, at uh, school with a whole bunch of poetry. And I'm very proud of him with that. He's very, very, very smart. Uh, myself, um, I do, outside of jiu-jitsu, like one of my hobbies, I do like music. I'm still white belt, though, but uh, I play a couple tunes on the guitar, make some songs. Mm-hmm. I even made a couple jiu-jitsu songs. I'm not going to sing today, but uh, now about my brother, Higan. I think if he wasn't a, a jiu-jitsu teacher, I think he could be a stand-up comedian because he's the funniest, funniest guy I ever met. And uh, my brother, Jean-Jacques, uh, let's see, he's... Uh, He's an amazing inspiration for me, always been uh, his example uh, with all his challenges in life. I'm very proud of him, along with all my other brothers. Uh, my brother Jean-Jacques, he's, uh, he always excelled in, uh, in many other sports outside of Jiu-Jitsu prior to fully dedicating himself to Jiu-Jitsu. Um, he used to be a floor hockey, uh, a hockey player champion he was even part of the national team in brazil wow but then he came to a point in his career that he had to choose between floor hockey and jiu-jitsu and he chose jiu-jitsu thankfully yes yes <laughs> and uh and my brother john he's uh, he's very in tune and connected to nature and he's uh he's like a, a nature wizard you know he can he can plant uh, vegetables from ro- in rocks, mm-hmm. you know. His, uh, I even had the chance and opportunity to make some juices with some of his vegetables, and really, really good. Mm. So I was talking to Eric Paulson the other day, about yeah. one of Higan's black belts. Yes. And I said, tell me something about Roger Machado. And he said, well, he's the yogi of the family. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think he meant by that? <laughs> well, uh, my brothers tease me a little bit. Uh, like they like one of the videos I did, one of the seminars they they advertise on the video say Zen Master. <laughs> uh, I think because uh, I do I do I do see the bigger picture, you know, of martial arts and uh, and I think the physical aspects is just the beginning of uh, a lifelong journey. And uh, and uh, and I think uh, what my, what uh, Mr. Eric Paulson meant and my brothers is the I, I do enjoy yoga. You know, it's one of my other practice that I do alongside my jujitsu, and and uh, it really helps me a lot. You know, with my uh, you know my balance, harmony, uh, focus, and I think that's what he meant mm. with that. Right. Yeah. I, I know a lot of people that, that cross train with yoga and jiu jitsu, but mm-hmm. some people say, nope, jiu jitsu is enough all by itself. What, what is it about yoga that you think jiu jitsu doesn't develop? Well, um, I think you can develop so many things with jiu jitsu, but I think there's so many other things can complement your practice. I think. Uh, what someone could attain uh, from a yoga practice, I think um, one of the things that stands out for me, it's the body awareness. You, you pretty much get to know more your body because especially your breathing. A lot of times uh, uh, people don't realize how much important your breath is. And, uh, and, and pretty much by being aware of uh, your breathing and controlling your breath, um, you can relax, you can recover, even in the midst of a very hard training, um, you find yourself tired and you start to work with your breathing, you are able to recover. You know, you don't have to pass out in the middle of the mat and then, okay, let's take a break. You can do that during training. That's what, uh, and that's something that the yoga can help you because you become aware of your breath. 
it was different exercises. And right. You know, when I think back of the 1990s mm-hmm. yeah, of jiu-jitsu in America, it was pretty much either you trained with the Gracies or you trained with the Machados. There wasn't mm-hmm. very many other groups going on at that time. Yeah. Now there's a lot of other jiu-jitsu mm-hmm. organizations, but take me back to the 90s and tell me what was the environment like? Well, um, I think in the 90s, uh, uh, jiu-jitsu definitely was not as popular uh, how it is nowadays. Uh, there wasn't many schools around. Uh, not any tournaments, and um, but uh, but I think uh, like when when you mention jiu-jitsu, uh, people would look at you. What Brazilian jiu-jitsu? What's that? I never heard about that. Is that the same as Japanese jiu-jitsu? <laughs> but uh, but I think after uh, uh, my cousin Hoyce, you know Hoyce Gracie uh, participated in the UFC, and I think that was uh, one of the main boosts and advertisements for the the, the awareness of uh, the existence of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and uh, and how much this uh, wonderful inspiring art can offer from not just for mixed or martial arts but all different venues of life. Yeah, for sure. So for people that don't know, tell us about the connection between the Machado and the Gracie's family. Well, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, the Grace family is a huge family, and, uh, and I have a big family too, five brothers, you know. But uh, the connection is uh, my, my late uh, uncle, Carlos Grace Sr., uh, during his lifetime, he had 21 kids, and his last wife, was my aunt, uh, my mother's older sister. And with her, he had six kids, like three boys and three girls. Uh, He was Carlos Gracie Jr., Crawling Gracie, Helium Gracie, Carla Gracie, Hela Gracie, and Kila Gracie. And and so that's how we, me and my brothers, that's how we got uh, connected with jiu-jitsu and and since as <laughs> little babies we are just we didn't have much a choice i think in order to survive we we had to jump into the mat otherwise my little brother would be choking me you know so uh it was a lot of fun i have so many uh, fond memories you know about those times who do you remember training with who are your earliest training partners and instructors i think my um i think um, my main instructor you know that started everything I, I even for me and my brothers included it was uh late um, holds gracie and um, he was definitely a pioneer of his time and he inspired so many uh, people and uh, and I still remember a lot of good things that uh, he taught all of us, and we st- still push us forward. You know. Right. So your brothers have a lot of students across the country, mm-hmm. but your brother, your oldest brother Carlos in Texas, he had Chuck Norris as a student. Yes. Is, is, <laughs> yes. How envious does that make you feel? Oh, very envious. Very envious. Uh, I did. Uh, I did have. Uh, I, I did have the opportunity of meeting Chuck. Uh, because uh, my brothers, they came, um, they came to America prior to me. Like uh, I've been here for about uh, 20 years, and uh, but my brothers, all of them, the four of them, came about 25, 26 years ago, prior to me, like five, six years before. And uh, so when I came, I met Chuck, but I didn't have the opportunity to work much with him, you know. But uh, my brothers had a good time with him. They even worked one of his shows, the Texas Ranger. Right. They had one episode. They were there, you know, doing the filming. And I was left behind teaching all the classes at the academy, you know. Speaking of academies, where yes. is your academy now? Yeah, my academy is uh, in uh, Pasadena, California, yes. And walk me through one of your typical classes. Well, um, I have uh, I have classes for um, all levels, you know. I have... Uh, I usually break down in two levels, the fundamentals, where I work the basics of the basics. Uh, I love teaching the basics because um, every time I teach the basics, I I learn something more, something else that 
add even more to the basics. Let me stop you for a moment yes, there. You, sure. you, you say basics, and but I don't think there's a universal understanding of what basics means. The mm -hmm. basics to one guy, basics to the Mendez that's, brothers might be the Barambolo. That's and, right. That's <laughs> true. That's true. What do the basics well, mean? Well, uh, a basic, a, a simple definition for me is simplicity. Simplicity of understand, understanding and simplicity of application to any age, any level, any size. So that's what's simple. Whereas it's something that I could teach someone that never done jiu-jitsu in their own life, is completely out of shape, or it's old or it's young, and by the end of one class, he would be able, for most of the time, to understand and perform the technique. Everybody says that basics are most important, and you just said that you love teaching them. I love it. Don't yes. you ever get bored of teaching the basics? No, to be honest, no. Because uh, I think that's, uh, that's just uh, what inspires me. It's the, the continuity uh, learning experience when you're a teacher. That inspires my work. And, um, and every time I, I, I teach, I learn something new from the basics. And, and, and I notice when, when, I, when I make sure that all my students have a strong foundation, it's so much easier for me uh, to teach them the next level, the more advanced. Because when you talk, let's say, when you talk about armbar, you know, when you work the basic fundamentals of how, how the armbar works, and especially in the safety guidelines, how to practice and how to apply and train safely, then uh, my students don't get hurt, they're happy, and then when I start to teach and explain them, the, you know, the infinity of variations and combinations of the armbar that itself, they, under, they pick it up much faster. It's much easier for them to learn and apply it. Right. One of the beauties of this art is that it's always evolving. We yes. always get new competition footage of, of seeing things like him on board just choking Sinistro when he has the back and things that you wouldn't expect. Yeah. It's not a concrete set of techniques. It's That's always true. Changing. That's true. You just mentioned that you are always learning. Is there any yes. examples of anything that you have learned recently that you can give us? Well, um, and, and especially, and I learned, believe it or not, most for my own students. They, they don't even know. I just keep my eyes open and, uh, and a lot of time from the experience of teaching them, I'm learning uh, amazing things. The, and uh, the students, I don't tell them because I don't want them, you know, to develop big egos. But uh, they uh, they teach me a lot. Yeah, like um, different things. Like sometimes, uh, for example, I, I teach uh, one particular technique to them, and uh, and then I I observe them, and for some reason, they start doing the, they do the technique slightly different than the way that I taught. And sometimes, to be honest, uh, they teach me even a better way, mm. you know, and I'm very humble to accept the lesson, you know, because uh, that's what is great about Jiu Jitsu. It's an art that in constant involvement and you're learning every day, every time from everyone. Yeah, like, like we were just talking about earlier, that's the beauty of the art. You know, if, if a blue belt thinks he has a better way of doing it than his instructor and during course, sparring, he can try it and he can I, test it And, out. you know, I'm very humble to accept and, uh, and to learn, you know. I, I'm a teacher, but most of all, I'm a student, you know, and I, and I, don't, I don't let that um, get over my head. Mm -hmm. You know, just be doing, I've been doing uh, the art for all these years. Uh, that doesn't make me better than anybody. You know, I think we all have something to add and offer to the art of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Right. So let's go back and talk about your class structure for a oh, moment. Oh, yes. So sure. we start, I'm sure you do some kind of warm-up. Yes. Then you teach some techniques. Mm -hmm. And then what do you do after that? Well, um, a basic structure, yeah, I do like a, like a, a warm-up, depending on which level of group that I have, uh, get their whole body warmed up. And sometimes I do some uh, a mixture of movements and, uh, and stretch exercise. A little bit of my yoga background. I just I put on a blender with jiu-jitsu, mix it up, and throw it to students. And it make it fun because uh, they are not doing something too traditional. 
And some think that work on their flexibility and adds to their coordination and mobility as well. And so I do that. And then uh, usually I have a, a team for a particular class where we're working on one particular area. We do the drills, of course, and, and I, I like to break the techniques in steps, usually like four steps. I try to stand to mention the, the most important parts, steps of the technique, then the students practice for a part of the class. Later on, they even work with some resistance, the same technique, and then on the end, we always have like a, the, the rolling session of the class, the free sparring, sometimes in circuit or sometimes just like a regular friendly training. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you can say that defines Machado Jiu Jitsu? Is there anything different from other organizations? Well, um, I think the main thing that stands out for me, like um, our family motto is leave your ego at the door. And, uh, and I think one of the biggest, that's, that's our primary drive with everything we do, like no ego, being very humble, wishing the best and always looking for the best in everyone. And, um, and uh, I think that would be uh, one of the main things. Some schools are very competition focused. Some schools are more self-defense focused. Mm -hmm. These days, I don't see a whole lot of Machado students in competitions. Mm -hmm. What is mm -hmm. your and the family's uh, well, philosophy? Um, I would say, yeah, we do have a competitor, but uh, to be honest, like the biggest group uh, of all my students, the competition team is a minority com compared with the majority of my students. Um, I do have a competition team. I do support them 100%, train them, make the best to get them ready for the tournaments. But the, the majority of the students that I see walking into my school is like regular people, average people that they just themselves, they don't have the interest on uh, competing on tournaments. They just uh, train for themselves, mm -hmm. uh, for fun. They want to lose weight. They want to get in good shape. Um, they want to train for fun, for sh as a stress relief, you know, so. Right. And speaking of competitors in the family, of course, we saw Higan compete a lot in the yes, past. Yes, uh, yes, John Jock competed a lot, ABCC yes, yes. champion. But nowadays, I don't see any Machados uh, family members competing. Why is that? No, I think <laughs> we don't have as many kids as our cousins, you know. Uh, I do love my cousins, okay? And uh, like... Uh, and so, but we do have a, a new generation, you know, uh, moving forward. Uh, I have, I only had girls, two girls. So uh, they do, they are involved in jiu-jitsu, but they don't have as much uh, interest in uh, competition. And, but my youngest brother, him and my oldest brother, they had, um, my youngest brother had four kids and he has two older boys. And I think his second oldest is a brown belt. And I think he's, he's involved in tournaments. He doesn't compete in all of them, but he, he is competing on some of the tournaments. And my brother Carlos, the oldest one, his kids are still at early age, like eight, nine years old. And so they are involved in tournaments too, but it's still at an earlier stage. Right, nice. We'll be looking forward to yeah. see following them in their careers. Yeah. So yeah, you have to, yeah. Yep. One thing I forgot to mention, uh, Jake. Yeah, about the, yeah, it just came back about the Machado Jiu-Jitsu, like another thing that really stands out for me, the, um, not just the leave your ego at the door, but one thing that we pass along uh, much to our students is the, the importance of family and the family unit, you know, and, uh, and the students almost like being an extension of our f own families. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to mention that. Nice. Yes. So uh, the last question I have for you, you guys sure. have a big event every yes. year, and this one's coming up in October. Correct. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, yes, we do have, it's called the Machado Brothers Camp, and it's going to be held um, in Texas, Dallas, Texas, on October 25th, 26th, and 27th. And so it's a, it's a very, very special opportunity. It's pretty much uh, like a, a family seminar. It's like, and, it, and actually it's the only time in the whole year that we have all the five brothers in one place at the same time. 
So I think it's a treat, and, and anybody that comes has the opportunity to learn from each one of the brothers, uh, sharing uh, their own s secret techniques uh, to all the students. And uh, yeah, so, uh, but I do have, I think for anybody that's interested on, uh, on the participating in this event, uh, there is a, a website, it's called uh, rcjmachadopro.com. And, um, and we have some sponsors of the event, would be okay to mention, uh, uh, Family Wise Healthcare, Fogo de Chão, uh, Fairfield Marriott, and Blue Lair Innovative Technology. So is this open just to Machado students? No, actually it's open to everyone. And how much does it cost? You know, <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, I, I don't wanna give any wrong information, but anybody that uh, goes to the, to the website well, if it's cheaper than a thousand dollars, it's a bargain. Yes, but it's it's a really rare uh, opportunity that I, I really love it. I really look forward to every year, and because uh, I teach, you know, a lot of the latest techniques. We've been working ourselves with our own students, and that's how I learn a lot of cool stuff from my own brothers. You know, I kind of watch what they're doing there on their section of the seminar and make some notes, but record a little bit. <laughs> that's cool. And usually you make a DVD of the event too. Right? Oh yes, ex exactly, exactly. And usually uh, we, we did like, uh, so far I think we did one or two DVDs mm -hmm. from uh, some of the, the seminars. All right, nice. Well, speaking of techniques, you're gonna show us some techniques on the mat today. That's right. What that's do you have right. in mind to show tonight? Well, um, I'd, I would like to show a couple techniques that I, be, I worked with uh, my students uh, that they helped me to develop throughout the years. Uh, so a couple submissions from, uh, you know, almost like a little surprise there that uh, your partner the, your partner doesn't see it coming. Right. So. Okay, nice. Well, before we actually get to that, there's one last thing we need to do. Every week we get lots of email from viewers, and yes. uh, this time we're going to take a look at a mail from, uh, let's take a look at the viewer email. A viewer named PJ writes in, I love the Metamora style of presenting BJJ. Are there any other events like this? Did you watch uh, Metamoris? Yeah, yeah, I, I watched. Uh, so. What do you think about watching it in, in that format versus a tournament format? Um, I think it's very interesting because um, it, it's kind of a, there's controversy about it, but uh, I think it's very interesting because somehow I think they are, they're attempting to bring uh, jujitsu to its roots, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, old school. There was a no time limit, uh, no weight classes. It was just go there, and and um, there was there was there was not uh, the, as much the the scoring, right. you know, because a lot of a lot of matches sometimes, you know, it's it's point oriented, you yeah. know, and and, and, and sometimes uh, you miss. Um, you miss watching uh, competitors uh, fighting to win, not fighting to not lose. Right. You see, that's such a huge difference. And it's so much more inspired when you see those kind of matches. That That's when people stand up on the, on the stands, hey, I love that match. It's not one guy. He does half a point on the first minute and stall for right. 90 minutes, you right. know. Yeah, everybody wants to see the finish, right? Yes, yes, yes. So to answer your question, PJ, actually, this is the uh, Metamore style of uh, presenting jiu-jitsu has occurred uh, in, in about four different events in the past. The first one uh, was Hicks and Gracie's Budo Challenge mm -hmm. in 2005. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite event of all time. Some of the guys that were in that event include Robert Drysdale, Rafael Lovato Jr., Shinya Aoki, Leo Vieira, Marcelo Garcia, Jacare, and Shanji. What an event that was. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. But they only had one. Uh, then the following year, we had two great events. The LA Sub X uh, had Jeff Glover, Lovato, Machida, Drysdale, Shanji, uh, John Jock, and uh, Marcelo Garcia versus Cameron Earl, which, mm. which is one of Marcelo's last losses. And then also in the same year, we had uh, the Professional Sub League, X Mission, uh, with Glover, Lovato, Jake Shields, Marcelo, and Randy Couture versus Jacare. So all those events had a very similar look as uh, Minna Morris did, but none of them lasted more than two events. It, you know, it cost so much money to put these events on that they none of them have been able to seem to make it work. We'll see if Minna Morris can keep it going. 
But all those DVDs are available on Budo Videos. And now another company that's doing a, a good job of these kind of events is the BJJ Expo, which you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. Uh, we're going to have some great super fights there in November, so stay tuned for that. And thanks for the email. All right, guys, we'll be back in just a moment with Roger Machado teaching you some great techniques on the mat. <laughs> 